Please. I'm going to show you my answer. Um, firstly, I'll tell you the number, and then those of you who have it, because there are some of you who do, can, um, can, be, <laughs> can breathe a sigh of relief. However, I'm just going to say, um, when you have a look at a question like this, right? Your ability to, if, if you're not convinced of the answer before you're told the answer and absolutely know that that's the answer and, and aren't so committed to it that you're like, no, the answer is wrong. If you get told something different, then you don't really know if your answer is the answer, right? So that means, that doesn't mean a bad thing. I mean, you got the right number, but it means you still got a way to go, okay? So, the answer is 66, okay? So congratulations if you got 66. <laughs> However, it's worth pointing out, I can come up with the number 66 by stringing together a random series of like, add this and multiply that and aha, 66. And you might not be able to demonstrate why it is 66, okay? So, um, my three clues, my three clues, um, started with, come up with a simpler version of this problem. Okay? Remember I said to you, if you have a simple problem and you can list things out, then list them out. One of the wonderful things about this is that it's sort of self-evident. You're like, well, there they are. Right? Like I've got all the ways, so you don't need to necessarily worry about like, did I miss a type or did I, did I look at it the wrong way? It's like, well, I've got, I've written down all the ways. Now you can't, despite Brendan, uh, you know, trying, you can't write down all the ways, at least <laughs> even with this, like that's actually physically possible. But most people will not be systematic enough to actually get all 66 and not miss any and make sure they've, they've got all of them. Um, I had a Pokemon image that came to my head, but I'm not going to say it, okay? So what you should do instead is, let, let's, let's boil the question down. Let's imagine if we had something simpler, right? Because then I actually can list them and then I can try and use principles there to convince myself of the answer here, okay? So, what would be a nicer, smaller number of identical balls to put into three label boxes. Now, to keep things interesting, um, maybe you want to do this with me. I think probably a reasonable number that's still going to have enough in common with the question that what principles I gain out of it will help me. I'm going to go with three. So, this is a question. Whoops, I should say labeled, by the way. Um, the place where I got this question from didn't say labeled, um, which actually changes the question a little bit. This means I can tell the boxes apart, right? There's like box one, box two, box three, or red box, green box, blue box, okay? So these can be distinguished, but these cannot. Now, with three, with three, there are 10 ways. There are exactly 10 ways, and you can help me work out what they are. Let's imagine you've got box one, box two, box three. We already had this discussion, but just for the sake of the record, can you have all of your three identical balls in one of the boxes? Yes. Of course you can, because you're still placing them into boxes, you just happen to leave some of them empty. Okay? So try and think about this in a logical way. What might be a way that you start, start listing out the ways you can place, like how many in here, how many in here, how many in here? What's a nice logical way? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, yeah, cool. I think that's about as simple as I can get, right? Take them all, there they are, okay? But as soon as you write that down, if you're thinking about it systematically, there are other ways that are very similar to this, but different enough, right? For example, let's take the same group and put them all in there, or take the same group and put them all in there. Good, okay? I guess a way I could say this is, this is all the ways of arranging by using one of the boxes. Does that make sense? Okay, now I'm trying to stay logical, right? And list them out in a systematic way. If this is the ways of doing it by using one box, how many ways are there if I use two boxes? Okay, so if I use two boxes, one of them's gonna have two and one's gonna have one, right? And then the last one has zero. Okay, and that's the only ways to do it. So for example, I could go two, one, zero. Give me another one. Now, interesting, I'm going to go for 201 because again, I want to list this out in a systematic way so I don't miss anything, right? So I'm going to keep these the same and then swap these, right? And then I'm going to have another two like this, right? One, zero, zero, one. You see how I'm trying to do this in a systematic way so I don't miss anything? I'm still in the scheme of using two, two boxes. So the last one, grab a seat, is going to be two, two. Zero, one, one, zero. Happy? 
Are there any other ways that I can use just two boxes? No. Just two boxes. That's it, right? That's it. So I've got one box used, two boxes used. How many ways can I use all the boxes? There's only one way, right? One, one, one. Okay. So there's 10 options. That's it. And like I said, the, the wonderful thing about a list, like we, I think we sort of look down on lists, right? Because like, oh, what a pedestrian way to do things. But it's self-evident. There's no other way that you can do this. Uh, one box, two boxes, three boxes, it's all the options. Okay. So then comes the challenge of thinking, well, how can I come up with the number 10? In what ways can I work out 10 coming through in here, right? Now, to try and get at the logic, to try and get at the logic, um, my second clue, my second and third clues are actually two halves of the same clue. They were to think about this not in terms of putting balls into boxes, but thinking about the balls being already there and ways to separate them into different boxes, right? So here is like, if you can want to imagine this way, here the balls are movable, right? It's like, oh, where, where should I place them? And these things are just fixed, okay? My second scheme of thinking about this is, well, what if the balls are fixed? And I'm trying to designate, these ones go in this box, these ones go in this box, etc. okay? So there's at least two ways of thinking about this, okay? Now, Jinsu, at this point, I'm gonna pause and ask you to explain to the class, how did you, what extra idea did you introduce? Because this is just balls and boxes. But you had a whole extra idea that helped you think about this. What was your way of thinking about it? That was the best, best way. Just, just explain what you did. Just explain. Oh. You had more than oh. just the balls to place, you had something else that you placed. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, I, I placed um, a gap. Okay. So I've got... Mm. Okay. So, this is a new way of framing the question, right? There's nothing about gaps in the question, but we can introduce these guys as our mechanism for saying, okay, some of these will be in the first box, some of these will be in the second, and some will be in the third. Okay. For instance, this is one of the arrangements. This is one of the arrangements. In fact, it's the first arrangement. Okay. Can you imagine? Everything to the left of this gap is the first box. right? And then everything in here is the second box. right? And then everything over here is the third box. So this is 300. Zero, zero. Do you see that? How would I do this one? How would I do it? What kind of um, way would it be balls and gaps together? Gap. Yeah. Ball, 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 gap. gap. Very good. Okay, look, see? Everything before the first gap, that's what's in box one, which is none of them. Then here's box two, and then here's box three, and it's also empty. You see how this works? Okay. And you can say any of these in this way, and it'll work. Okay. So how many objects am I arranging? I count one, two, three, four, five objects. Right? five objects are, ah, but some of them are identical, right? How many identical things do I have? Three and two. Well, the, these um, balls are all identical, so three factorial, and then the gaps are also identical, right? I can't tell the difference between them, right? So that's 10. That's 10, yes? Okay, now that's not the only way you can think about it. You can think about, and this is the way that Liz was trying to, but didn't quite get there. You can think about, and I actually, um, I don't know if you remember this, when we did one of those, like, oh, what was the word I gave you? Decisions, I think it was. And you had to say, oh, okay, how many ways can I arrange it where the D is to the left of the uh, N or something like that? Okay, right? So if I fix these guys in place, right, I can think about arranging the gaps. Now, how many places are there where I can put a gap in here? How many ways? I count four. One, two, three, four. Right? Ah. But there's a secret one. There's a secret one. How many gaps do I have to place again? How many gaps? Two. I have two gaps to place. So this is going to be something, choose two. Right? Something, choose two. Oh, by the way, yeah, we already established this is ten. Right? Something choose two. Now I'm saying that, okay, you can put it here, 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 or here, right? But actually, once you place one of the gaps, okay? Like say I place a gap here. Let's put it here. Let's place a gap there, okay? 
at the moment, what does this configuration look like? Where are, where are all of the, um, the balls in this current configuration? This one is in the first box, and these are in the second box, right? What if I didn't want to place any in the third box, right? Where would I put it? And the answer is, I wouldn't use that gap. That gap I don't need, right? I've already separated them into two groups, okay? So I've got the first group, second group, and I don't need to divide them anymore. Does that make sense? So I've got one, two, three, four, five spots where I can put a gap, and I have to choose two of them. And you will find 5C2 is also 10, because that is in fact 5C2, okay? But we arrived at this in kind of a different way, right? We were arranging objects, it was a permutation, the order matters, right? But then you have these identical things. Does that make sense? Yeah. At the very front? I can still do that, right? Still do that. Box one and box two is the three. Mm -hmm. Or this is a different arrangement again, right? So I can use the second gap, or I don't have to. I don't have to use it, right? So, yeah. Um, could you think about this like Liz's way? Like, could you think about it as not having a mystery gap, but when you actually place a gap, you can place another gap ne right next to it? Yes, you yes, you can. Yes, gap. that's exactly right. So, that's another way of thinking about it. I contemplated using that as my explanation, uh, but no, then I thought, really I, yeah, I, I get confused because then I'm like, okay, I place a gap. And essentially what you're mentioning is like placing two gaps together, yeah. right? So it's like, oh, I've made a new position, right? Which is so right where I am. And it, do, it, do, well, it doesn't need to be two because if I put it here or here, it's the yeah. same, yeah. it has the same effect, right? But I think it's better just to say, well, don't, don't use that. It has the effect of not dividing anything at all. So you might as well just put it to one side, okay? So now you're ready to tell me what the answer to the original question is, right? Because you've understood the principle in a manageable way. What's different? Like, yeah, here. yeah, yeah. From three identical balls, I added two gaps to that, and that's what made it 5C2, not 3C2, right? But if I have 10 balls and I still have two gaps, then it's going to be not 5C2, but 12C2. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Which I think is you'll find is 66. And one of the lovely things about this, about having understood the way it works, is that now I can say, all right, what if you wanted to pay, place them into, um, I don't know, 10 boxes, <laughs> right? That wouldn't be any more difficult for you now that you understand what's going on underneath. Whereas if you want to try and go with cases, you're going to be sitting there for a very, very long time, okay? Please don't underestimate. A lot of people actually pretty much, this is what I mentioned before, I, don't th I didn't see anyone who actually said, okay, I can't work with this question and understand the principle right now, or at least I can't be convinced that my principle is right. Even the people who had the right answers still doubted. They're like, mm, maybe I haven't considered something. But if you sort of cut the question down to size, then you can say authoritatively, no, 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 I've considered everything, and it works, the principle works. And then I can extend it very easily. Does that make sense?